oranges. What came first, the name of the fruit or the name of the color? It's pretty well known that the name of the fruit influenced the name of the color, or changed the name of the color. The original word for orange in English was yellow red, which back then meant yellow red. The name of the fruit, however, comes to us from the French word orange, which came to the French from the Arabic word narange, which came to the Arabs from the Persian word narang, which came to the Persians from the Sanskrit word naranga. So as you can see, this 5,000 year old word has stayed pretty similar for a long time. Think of it like a game of telephone, but everyone speaking a different language in a different century. Now, not everywhere calls this an orange. Some places, like Greece and the Arabs and the Persians today, call it a Portugal, because the Portuguese traded it to them from China. Other places call it an Appleson, because they got the fruit from Germany, and Germany used to call it an Apfelzina, which means Chinese apple. And the places they call it an Appleson are Sweden and Russia. So that answers this fruit, but what about the mandarin orange? This little guy is called a mandarin orange, and most places agree that it's a mandarin orange. If they call it a Portugal, they will say mandarin Portugal. If they call it an apple sin, they'll call it a mandarin apple sin. But where does the word mandarin come from? It comes to us from Portuguese which came, from the Portuguese, came to the Portuguese from the Malaysian word, mantari, which means, like, official. And it was what they called the people in China who were in charge of trading. The Chinese officials, the Chinese mantari, and then the Portuguese called them mandarin. The word mantari in Malay comes from the Sanskrit word mantri, which comes from a Proto-Indo-European word, which brings us to our Proto-Indo-European word web. So this is our Proto-Indo-European word web. It shows how this reconstructed Proto-Indo-European word stem, which means to think, has led to many of the words that us and other languages know and love today. Let's start with Mandarin. So here we can follow it to Mantri, which is Sanskrit for advisor. It also gives the Sanskrit the word mantra, which is what the Hindus still call their holy text, texts to this day. Did that? Texts. Never mind. It led to the Malay word mantari, which means official. We can see how an advisor would also be an official. An advisor is also kind of like a thinker to an official. And then the Portuguese called the officials mandarin. And the word mandarin has, come up, has become so many different meanings. It can be Chinese, such as the language. It can be something from China. It can be the fruit. It's become a bunch of meanings, not only in Portuguese, but also in English. It, this stem also leads us to a Greek word. Greek is another Proto-Indo-European language, and gives, us, gives them the word mentor, which was a character in the Odyssey. So, mentor is someone who thinks. Makes sense, right? Right. It gives us the English word, and the French have the same word, but that's another thing. Through Germanic, which eventually leads to English, they had a word which I'm going to pronounce Mindio. I don't know how to pronounce this type of reconstruction, but it means like a little thought, like a little like cute thing, which came to Frankish, which is a Germanic language that's related to French. I'm going to pronounce this minuyu. I don't know how to read that, but it, it means love. So we can see how, like, a little thought, like a little thing that you think about, becomes something that you love. And then this is the French word mignon, which, filet mignon, it means cute. And also something that's, like, adored, and leads to the English word minion which is something that's cute and that you love, which has been ruined. Oh wait, that's more modern. Uh, it also gives us a couple words through Latin, um, one of them being from Old French, demented, 
which is like, it kind of means unminded, right? So if someone's demented, their mind has been taken out. Taken out. It also leads us to the modern English word mind. And also, comment. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So what do the Chinese think about all this? What do they call oranges and mandarins? Well, they don't care what we think. They have their own words and have for hundreds of years. The word for orange in Chinese is Qingzu. And the word for mandarin in Chinese is Juzi. I, I can't speak Mandarin, so that's my best go. But um, the word for Mandarin means child tangerine, which I think is adorable. That they're like, baby tangerine, let's call them little tangerine. Let's get back to the color. Let's bring it full circle. What do other languages call the color orange? Well, they don't call it what they call the fruit. They base it on the word orange. Um, the Russians call the fruit appelsin. And they call the color orange boy, which is like, I'm assuming that would be from French. Anybody who's a linguist or an etymologist in the comments, let me know if I'm crazy. And the Persians, well, they call the fruit of Portugal, or Portugal, call the color Nerangi, or Nerangi. <laughs>